Hi there. I've been covering the Bears since 2018. So Matt Nagy's first year was my first year covering the Chicago Bears. And one thing that I heard every year that Matt Nagy was the head coach, he said, everybody's competing for a starting job. No job is safe except for the really obvious jobs that were safe. Matt Eberflus is no different. The Bears' current head coach since last year been talking about everybody's competing, competition, competition, competition. To some degree, that is correct, but mostly you kind of have a really good idea of who your starting players are going to be well before training camp starts. But there are a couple of actual competitions going on in this version of Chicago Bears training camp, and it is at cornerback. Now, we kind of had presumed that Jalen Johnson will be well Jalen Johnson will be a starter on the outside. Kyler Gordon will be a, a starter on the inside. And it looked like Tariq Stevenson was getting the first crack at being the guy opposite of Jalen Johnson. Tariq Stevenson, the rookie second round cornerback out of Miami. But we have seen a lot of Terrell Smith sprinkled in the fifth rounder out of Minnesota sprinkled in getting first team reps. Alan Williams said, ah, nothing to see here. You know, you're going to see lots of guys getting shots with the first string. And, you know, that's just our plan for camp. But guess what? There is a competition going on between Tyreek Stevenson and Terrell Smith at the cornerback position. And the head coach, Matt Eberflus, essentially said that that was the case today. And Tyreek Stevenson, we got a chance to talk to him about said competition with Terrell Smith. You know, it's a competition to the end. We both got drafted. Fair opportunities don't it really don't matter where you got drafted at. Uh, end of the day, he come in every day with his head down, willing to work just as I am. I uh, had a couple slip ups, you know, as a rookie, and you know they made it. They, 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 well, they didn't tell me anything, but they made it real clear that it's gonna be a competition. You know, I didn't earn anything. I have no stripes in the league, so just you know, every day we come in, we smile at each other, and you know, we also know that we both working for the same position. Coach Blue said that some of those slip-ups that you kind of referenced are to be expected from a rookie actually coming in and competing against guys like DJ and Moon and those guys. What are some of those things that you feel like you need to tighten up? Uh, I would say my knowledge of the game, um, understanding you know, what comes with certain players and what comes with certain type of down and just this and stuff. Uh, basically, just understanding what type of player I'm going against. You know, Chase Claypool is totally different from a DJ Moore. And... You no, know, sometimes I won't say I struggle with it, but you know, having that mental that mental capacity to be able to switch in and out instead of going out there, you know, like I'm in college and just playing everybody the same way. Good stuff from Tariq Stevenson right there. Very aware. I will say this: I do still think that Tariq Stevenson has the inside edge on this. Like I, I do believe, like they wouldn't be wasting snaps with Terrell Smith with the first string if if there wasn't some legitimacy to the competition, but. Obviously, he's the guy that you targeted in the second round as opposed to the fifth round in Smith. So I still think Stevenson has the inside edge on the on the starting cornerback spot. You heard him talking about varying things up in terms of the wide receivers that he is covering and knowing the guys against whom you are playing. I love this, this next cut. I absolutely love because he was able to be real about DJ Moore. DJ Moore, the Bears' top receiver, a top receiver in the NFL, and it sounds like DJ Moore has been given Tyreek Stevens in hell. When, when you look at DJ and, and your opportunity to go up against him, what are some of the things that you see in him as a veteran receiver that help you kind of get better? I just hate his body control. Like I hate, I like I don't hate it, but I, <laughs> but uh, it's just, just just the way that he know he understands the game. He understands, you know, if I take away this leverage and he has to get to it, he knows that he can do certain things to get back to it. And, you know, I'm starting to watch film on him a lot and understand how he plays his game. It's like he's moving in slow motion and that, like I was saying earlier, his body control when the ball is in the air, like he doesn't exert himself and always finds a way to come down with the ball. When he makes a catch or two when you have near perfect coverage, I mean, how do you kind of process that after the fact? I'd be upset, but <laughs> I'd be upset. But at the end of the day, I just know that I'm getting better. I'm going against a, a hell of a vet, and you know him being able to, to to you know give me the reps that I needed, but also become better himself. It's just gonna make me better from you know the times I'm in the game and the game on the line. And you know, as a rookie, I know the ball coming my way.
That, I think that I thought that was great. I think mean, that's hilarious that he's like, damn, his body control. Yeah, and it's going to be good. I mean, DJ Moore, he's going to be good for those kids out there. And then it should give you, the Bears fan, the Chicago sports fan, a little bit more, if you didn't already have it, a little bit more faith in what DJ Moore is been has been doing and will continue to do, that he is the clear number one. He has ramped everything up out there. So that's Tyreek Stevenson. We haven't really had a chance to talk to Terrell Smith for a while. Hopefully we'll get to talk to him in the next few days in camp. So we'll continue to monitor that particular competition. Kyler Gordon, by the way, looks great in the slot. I just love that they're just giving him that opportunity to be in the slot and then, you know, just work there. And he looks so confident. He looks so confident. I think we're starting to see why they drafted him in the second round, which they did a couple of years ago now. So that's it's good that that is there. I'd say the only other spot where, and I know how the NFL works with running backs, you know, not always a standard starter, but there will be a starter at running back, whether it's Dante Foreman or Khalil Herbert. Herbert. And, and I've always been, like from the beginning when I'm asked that question, I still think Khalil Herbert will end up getting the most snaps on this team. You know, he's earned it. He, his yards per carry were excellent last year. We know that he struggles in terms of the blocking. I still think he's going to be the, you know, the number one. However, we have been seeing a lot, you know, Dante Foreman has, you know, he is showing himself quite a bit and the bears are using him a lot. So, you know, even if Herbert does end up with the most snaps at running back, most carries at running back, I, it's clear that, Foreman is going to be a big part of this, as he should be, as as he should be. So that's one that is worth watching, too. You know, Roshan Johnson, you know, the rookie. I don't know how many carries he's going to get early on. Travis Homer has been pretty present at times, sometimes with the first stringers in certain situations, uh, sometimes with the second stringers as well. Then, obviously, in the name of competition, you know, then then you do get down to some of the depth spots. And I think that's what usually coaches are talking about when they talk about competition. You got to win jobs at the end of the roster. You know, we've seen a lot of Jatari. You know, we saw some Jatari Carter in the regular season last year, the offensive lineman that they drafted a couple of years ago in the first draft of Ryan Poles when they started picking all those offensive linemen late. He's been plugged in occasionally as a depth piece at guard on the front line. Lucas Patrick, who is not going to be a starter on the offensive line this year, but they have plugged him in at center a couple of times. Uh, Nate Davis missed the day and right in at guard is where Lucas Patrick went. Doug Kramer, the Illini guy, was playing second string center at least one day, the day that Lucas Patrick was not doing the second string centering. So Doug Kramer still lives. Doug Kramer still lives. Another draft pick from a couple of years ago. Um, so they're still working him out at center and Dieter Iceland and some of these other guys too that you have to consider when you're talking about depth. Um, yes, yes, Larry Borum still. You don't hear about old Lair as much anymore, but Larry Borum still out there. Alex Leatherwood still a part of this team. So you talk about guys that are trying to push each other to at least squeak onto the roster and be part of the depth of this team. And then I guess the last spot would be wide receiver. I mean, we know the obvious, you know, what, what we've seen the most of lately anyway is Chase Claypool, wide out, um, obviously DJ Moore on the other side, lots of of Darnell Mooney in the slot. But then you got some guys like Bayless Jones Jr. and Tyler Scott, the rookie, Nasimba Webster back for another training camp. Uh, you've got Aaron Crookshank. I like Aaron Crookshank. I like him. He, he, he's a good player. I don't know why I just turned into Lou Pinella, but I did. It happened, and from time to time, things like that will occur on this podcast. But uh, Aaron Crookshank has, has made some nice plays, and he's been, you know, he's been in the competition for punt returner as well along with Valus Jones Jr. and Dante. I think it's I think that job is going to go to Dante Pettis for sure, but Valus Jones Jr. has been getting some of that. Tyler Scott competing for that punting gig as well. So we'll continue to track these competitions that have been going on in training camp, but it's on at the corner, man. I love seeing that. A couple of rookies duking it out for the uh, cornerback spot opposite of Jalen Johnson. I want to end with my guy, Tevin Jenkins. Tevin Jenkins, the, the Bears starting left guard this year. He's had to switch over to that position with Nate Davis taking over on the right side. 
And that, you know, he says that there's a few different things that he's got to get used to, but I think he seemed totally comfortable and, you know, talking about it and playing the position of not seeing any hitches this year with Tevin Jenkins. We know that to a large degree, it is about health with him and listen to the good Dr. Tevin Jenkins talking about his health and what he's doing to strengthen himself. You said earlier this off season that you were working on the smaller muscles in your back, if I remember right. Did, does it feel different? Can you, do you feel that difference right now that everything feels stronger back there? Yeah. Uh, so what I've started learning, I mean, don't actually quote me on this, but I think there's, I think there's small muscles around your spine that I have never noticed or never thought about in my whole life. And when I started doing more workouts and educating myself because I have to, because of my back, it's just, um, when I did start to strengthen those things, you know, you start seeing differences in how your posture is, you know, my posture right now is very bad. I'm leaning forward. But other than that, it's just I try to uh, be more conscious of that, and it does make a big difference. The difference that it's made for you, is that like how you feel health-wise, strength-wise, or are you noticing that on the field? Like are you able to do different things on the field because of the way you're training and working on those things? Uh, I do, actually. It's just like uh, when a D-lineman is trying to like shed you off or throw you, you'd be able to engage that certain core non-consciously. Like, the muscle just has that natural reaction to activate, and you can just move yourself back in position, in a good position, and block a man. Are you able to be in a place where you're, get to a place where you don't have to think about the back? Are you already in that spot, or is, is it hard, especially with the pads coming out today and things getting a little more physical? It's hard to not, you know, let it I mean, it's, you still always got to be conscious of it, but uh, overall, I'm not, I'm not worried about it. It's just something, it's like an afterthought, really. It's like, we had a hard day. Am I going to be sore tomorrow? Most likely. We're hitting today, so it's going to be – things going to be sore. Legs going to be sore. Back's going to be sore. Head's going to be sore. It's just it's how it is. Sore we can handle from Tevin Jenkins. We just don't want that guy injured because if this offensive line stays healthy, which is an if for any offensive line in the league, you know, you get Darnell Wright up to speed at right tackle. I mean, this could – I'm not saying this is going to be an all-star unit, but this could be a good, tight offensive line. And if we expect there to be progress from Justin Fields this season, that offensive line has got to be tight. It has got to be strong. Thanks for joining us on this edition of the Daily Score. We always appreciate appreciate your feedback. Thanks for subscribing and ranking and doing whatever it is that people do with these podcasts. I appreciate it. For our executive producer, Ray Diaz, I am Mark Rohde. Have a great day. Bye-bye. 